Make sure to use code BANGLE at sign up on FanDuel for a $20 deposit bonus. And check out my second channel for other games coming up like Red Dead Redemption 2 and Call of Duty Black Ops 4. As well as my third channel with collaborations with some of your favorite YouTubers. Let's get into the video. Another video today back on Madden NFL 19. I'm currently streaming right now. So if you see any notifications pop up on the screen, that is what they are. We are doing the fantasy rebuild of the Philadelphia Eagles. Of course, uh, not exactly my favorite team as a Giants fan, but we're the Eagles today. That's just what's happening. So we're going to make them as good as possible and dominate the Giants, Cowboys, and Redskins. That is the idea. Obviously, Eagles have been in big Super Bowl slump mode, and we'll see if we can turn them around. If you do want to follow me on Twitch so I can have more viewers, uh, it's just more fun for that for me that way. Definitely, please follow me. Link is in the description, twitch.tv slash bangle. And let's just jump into it. All right. What is this coach name going to be? What is a funny name for the Eagles? Um, I think I think the last one I did, like, Carson came and Wentz, which is kind of funny. Not, like, to me, almost. Actually, I haven't done the Eagles this year. I might just rock with that one because it just popped in my head. Did I do that last year? I don't know. Either way, I'm all for the puns. Carson Kame looks pretty disgusting right now. We kind of need the second part to tie that all in. All right. Who doesn't love a good pun? Who doesn't love a good pun? As double 22 deuce back three months in a row says the F word. Yikes. And then, dude, I love football. Hey, man, me too. It's fucking sweet. All right. League settings, of course. Oh, Madden, which doesn't particularly matter. Injury off. End of the season. Quarter length doesn't matter. Weekly training auto. Scout college players auto. Throw pops off. And users one. Beautiful. Let's get into it. Let's get on uh, DMU. Um, so, with all the players back, the healthy Philadelphia Eagles team. And they have kind of been... Uh, ransacked by injuries, especially in the secondary. If you guys saw my mock draft video, you know that I gave the Eagles a cornerback, which I think is still like very much in play. I know there have been injuries, and that's why their cornerbacks have been so bad. But we'll get to that in a minute. We're starting with the offensive line here. Jason Peters, we need to upgrade on because he's 36 years old. He's still good, but he's never going to be higher than an 88 or an 89. It'll probably end up retiring after this season. And even though I, I know a lot of guys love Hal Vitae, He's not that good. Neither is what Isaac Samuel, uh, Sumalo. I think that's how it's pronounced. Jason Kelsey, Brandon Brooks. Really good group of two there. However, Jason Kelsey gets really bad really quickly because he's 30 years old, which kind of sucks. Lane Johnson. It's a great right side. We got to get better on the left. And then arguably the best tight end duo in the league with Zach Ertz and Dallas Goddard. And then Alshon Jeffrey, Golden Tate, Nelson Aguilar, Mike Wallace. I forgot was on this team. Jordan Matthews, Mac Hollins. In the backfield, Jay Ajayi, Darren Sproles, Corey Clement, Carson Wentz, the best backup in NFL history. Carson Wentz. And then on the defense side of the ball, we have Rodney McLeod, who's kind of sick. Avante Maddox, Malcolm Jenkins. Um, ooh. What is... Is it Grugier or Gruger Hill? I'd rather play Nathan Jerry or Paul Worlow. I feel like it's like, ugh, mm, I don't know. We're going to look. Kamu, it is. Shoot, I should have said it out loud. Jordan Hicks, hook him horns. Paul, we're going to talk about that. Nigel Bradham, Leroy Reynolds. And then at cornerback, we have Ronald Darby, Sidney Jones. Ronald Darby is really good. Sidney Jones, I think, could be really good, but he can't stay healthy. Jalen Mills is not good. I know a lot, some Eagles fans think he's sick. I don't know why. And also, I, I talk trash about Rasul Douglas in my mock draft. I'm like, he's not that good. And people are like, what do you mean? Rasul Douglas is sweet. He had 14 tackles last week. I'm like, oh, wow. 14 tackles as a cornerback. What a lockdown guy. Great stat there. On the defensive line, we have Chris Long, Fletcher Cox, Timmy Jernigan, Brandon Graham. And this is fantasy style, so a lot of these older guys will be traded. Kind of, we got to decide what we want to do. Let's hop into the trade center. And, um... See what's happening. I turned 39 in the fall. No, it's uh, 38 in the spring. So looking to trade players like 30 plus 
that I know are going to regress. Although, like, I kind of want to hold on to Malcolm Jenkins. I like that value. I'm going to trade Jason Peters if I can get value for him. I'm going to trade Golden Tate. I'm going to trade Chris Long if I can. And we'll see what we can improve upon. What do I want? Probably a lockdown cornerback if I can. That would probably be number one right now. Cardinals have Patrick Peterson. Would we be able to trade for him? I would be comfortable offering this package a three, although I don't think it would be accepted. We're kind of close. Maybe if we take out Chris Long and put in, uh, like, a second rounder, we might be in the neighborhood. We have two second round picks, so maybe it's not going to happen. Even a first round pick wouldn't get it done. So Patrick Peterson is completely off the table. That is unfortunate. That's a great picture from Cameron Johnston. Close your mouth or smile. Don't be in between. <laughs> like, what is that? What was the player that was in here previously? Chris Long we had. That's right. So, it's hard to make trades, I found, out of nowhere. James Bradbury we could get here. I don't really want him. Or Dante Jackson. Dante Jackson could be cool. It's never going to happen. Okay. So easy to trade for Kamara. Should we try to get Alvin Kamara on this team? This is a team that could use a running back. I know JJ is decent. I'd be cool with Kamara. Seahawks could get Shaquille Griffin, I guess. Um, Earl Thomas would not be a terrible option either. It's not going to happen. God. I want players. What about Golden Tate straight up for Kamara? Ooh, it is going to be kind of easy. Okay. Um, yeah, what about... I want Camu. I'm like Shamu the whale, man. Corey Graham, no interest. Could just be a pick. We could trade Dallas Goddard. I might just throw a pick in here, though. Let's go ahead and offer a fourth. It's going to be... Golden Tate, a four and a five for Alvin Kamara. Wow. I'm going to have to offer a three. A three might do it straight up. Yeah. Golden Tate and a third round pick for Alvin Kamara. We now have our running back of the future. This also gives us a nice window to trade JHI if we want to. Darren Sproles, I imagine, will have no interest from any team in the league due to his age. Yeah, no team wants him. So let's go ahead. Let's get J.J. in there. Let's get Jason Peters in there. See if we can get an offensive lineman, maybe. I still want a cornerback, but I'm not sure how easy that would be to, uh, to happen. Raiders, Panthers, Seahawks still have interest. Cardinals. I want... Okay, maybe maybe we can do something with the Seahawks. What would I want here, though? Probably Bobby Wagner. I don't know if we'll be able to get Bobby Wagner. Mm, yeah, it's unlikely. What else is in here? DJ Fluker at left guard is, like, somewhat appealing. I'm probably out. I don't know how many trades I'm going to do season one, but I need to get rid of some of this dead weight. And Jason Peters is a big part of that. Uh, Buda Baker. I'm actually kind of in if we can get Buda Baker. Might be able to. I think we will. What about Mike Wallace? Please want Mike Wallace, because I definitely do not. All right, trade accepted. Jason Peters, Chris Long, and Mike Wallace... Getting rid of a lot of older players there that are not going to be impact players for us in the future for a very talented young player in Buda Baker. He's a nickel cornerback. That's going to work really, really well here. So what's going to happen is Ronald Darby and Buda Baker will be one and two. And then when we come out in nickel packages, Buda Baker is going to be that slot cornerback. There we go. We also have Derek Barnett. I wanted him playing over Chris Jones, I can tell you. Or not Chris Jones. Chris Long, excuse me. Chris Jones could be a cool player to get, but I think we're going to stick it out with Timmy Jernigan. I'm definitely going to want to try and trade Haloti Nada. He is super old at this point. 
Definitely do not want that on the team. Um, hmm. Let's add him in. Hello, Dinata. Defensive tackle. We just did that. Uh, who are the older players on this team that I definitely don't want? So it's Nada, and that's kind of it. Like, I... I might try to trade Bradham and McLeod. Just because they might have some value, and I don't really see them being in the long-term future of this team. Dolphins, there's not really much here for me. Larmy Tunsil, maybe? That actually has a lot of interest. I don't think this will go through. It's close. We're going to take Haloti Nada out, and we're going to offer a third-round pick next year. It might have to be a second this year. But this is a, a trade I'm comfortable making. And then that just means I need to upgrade the linebacking core in free agency in the draft. And now I have a franchise left tackle. So boom, Rodney McLeod, Nigel Bradham, and a second round pick this year for Laramie Tunsil. And I think I'm probably about done with trades. I just want to package Haloti Nada off and maybe one more player and get a draft pick. Could be a first or second round pick, and I would be comfortable with that. So let's add in a... Uh, Timmy Journey, like, close your mouth, dude. You got... I know he's proud of the gold. It looks ridiculous, in my opinion. What else do we have here for value? Jordan Matthews, Jalen Mills. Trying to trade the Green Goblin. The Browns have green interest in these players? Oh, wait. Can we get Miles Garrett? Hold the phone just a minute here. I think a second round pick might get it done. And it does. Jordan Matthews, Jalen Mills, and a second gets us Miles Garrett. We didn't need Miles Garrett, but we have him now, which is really good because he's a beast and he's super young. And now I can trade. It's either Derek Barnett, which gives us like a big window to improve, or Brandon Graham, who's going to get worse. I think I'd rather trade Brandon Graham because he's 30, even though he's much better right now. I think it's just what I'd rather do. So I'm dismantling some of this team, I'm aware. Uh, but I'm going to build it back up the way that I want to. Still can trade JJ. See where the interest is here. So a lot of teams kind of want that. Bucks, what can we get from the Bucks? Lante David, I don't really, I'm not really interested in. Mike Evans, maybe? No. Let's look around. Chiefs. Eric Berry would be sick. I don't think there's a chance. Nah, there's not really. I don't think we'd be able to get Tyreek Hill either. Hmm. I talked about Chris Jones briefly. Again, I don't think this would happen. Okay, never mind. Brandon Graham, Jay Ajayi, straight up for Chris Jones. I guess they didn't have a lot of value in him for some reason. I don't really know why they would do that. And now I can trade Timmy Journey again. I know he's technically listed as an end. But, um... He's gonna slide inside. Cowboys. What I need here? Byron Jones could be cool. It's going to be weird to trade two defensive tackles at once. Let's maybe go to the uh, like the Raiders. And then try to get a pick. Because they should be pretty bad. So, Haloti Nata is not getting it done. Just straight up. Which, I mean, it shouldn't. But, you know, maybe. Ooh. That's going to be accepted. Hello, Dinata, Camo Gruger Hill. First round pick. Pretty good trade on our end. And if I could trade Timmy Jernigan, which, again, we don't need to. Let's see. Fletcher Cox, defensive tackle. Timmy Jernigan, defensive tackle. We could move Timmy Jernigan to, like, a straight-up nose tackle and play Fletcher Cox at left end. 
Chris Jones. Oh, we have Miles Garrett. Never mind. I kind of forgot about that. Yeah, no, I need to trade Timmy Jernigan. Who is also going to be real bad? Probably the Giants. And they need middle linebacker, which I can't trade. Left end, which I don't have one. Right tackle, which I can't trade. Left end, I'm not trading. So it would be picks. What about Timmy Jernigan in a fifth? Oh, that's nowhere close. Let's just get a second rounder from the Giants. Really? All right. They're going to make me throw in a seventh. Or a sixth. All right, Timmy Jernigan and a sixth for a second round pick from the New York Giants. I am done making trades. We're going to change the team up just a little bit. Brandon Brooks is a skill point now for some reason. When did we advance? I have no idea. No idea. Uh, pretty good backfield, though. I feel like the team didn't get a whole lot worse, which is cool. Because usually uh, it'll get worse when I kind of like take all the big players who are older and trade them. But I think we're fine now. Der Why would Derek Barnett play defensive tackle over Chris Jones? Uh, no. Chris Jones is going to slide inside to play defensive tackle. And this is now such a good defensive tackle duo. Fletcher Cox and Chris Jones, arguably uh, two top five guys at their position. Derek Barnett can stay at, let's see, Miles Garrett is technically not a speed rusher. Speed rusher is a scheme fit at right end. And it's going to be run stopper on the other side, right? No, I need to, I don't have a true left end. We'll make, we'll make Miles Garrett our left end. Trade Foles? Why? I don't think anyone's going to want Nick Foles. I'd rather just have the backup quarterback. He's only a 76 overall. He's close to 30. Uh, he doesn't really have a lot of value. So, stop. Let's see. I think this is going to be the team. Avante Maddox starting a free safety is obviously not great. But we've improved... Overall, I would say. And now we know exactly where we want to improve through the draft and free agency. It's going to be left guard, wide receiver on offense, and then the defense is going to be safety, both outside linebacker spots, and cornerback. This team's, like, real close. Also got to change the XP sliders. I've been rocking around, like, 130 or so recently. Feels like it plays pretty well. So we will do that. Oop. Just in like that 130 to 140 range. Sometimes a bit over. Just doing it quickly. Because I am streaming. As you guys know in the chat. And in watching the video, I did I did inform you already. Alshon going to regress soon? Like, yeah. But we're going to keep him. Simulate to the midseason mark. See how this team's doing. And we are... 6-2. and two. Not too bad. Currently atop the NFC East. We will go ahead and spend some coach XP here. And that is going to be on increased player weekly goal XP. Which is super imperative. Ronald Darby is an impending free agent. Who else is going to be here? Darren Sproles about Jordan Hicks. I am bringing back for sure. The rest, who cares? Ronald Darby, 24 years old, quick development. I mean, absolutely going to bring him back. We're going to give him a six-year deal till he's 30. Take down the money. Offer him that contract, 38.1 overall. Six-year deal to bring him back. And then Jordan Hicks, real low block shit, 26-year-old, quick development. Uh, we'll keep him till he is 31. Probably lower the salary slightly to make it a little bit more team-friendly. $26 million overall for five years, and Jordan Hicks is back. 
that is our re-signing window. That's pretty much all I wanted to do. And we will upgrade the team. Sydney Jones has two experience points. I like that. If Sydney Jones can get really good over the course of this thing, I think we're going to be in business. He's a free agent at the end of next year. And he'll probably be in the low 80s around then. So he's a player I'm definitely going to want to hold on to. I wish you could renegotiate contracts before contracts expired. That would be my dream. I would really, really like that. And we made the playoffs at 11-4-1, but so did the Cowboys at 9-7. Redskins finished 7-9, Giants at 5-11. Go ahead here and check out the stats. Carson Wentz, 4,200 passing yards, 34 touchdowns, only 5 interceptions. What a season. Defensively, or rushing, what the hell? Rushing, Alvin Kamara, or Kamara almost 1,400 yards, 4.3 per carry, 10 touchdowns. Great season for him. Receiving, Zach Ertz was a monster. Nelson Aguilar had 11 touchdowns. Alshon Jeffrey was solid besides only having three touchdowns, but not too bad. Offensive line performed really well. And then defensively, Jordan Hicks led our team in tackles with 122. Tackles for loss would be 23 for Miles Garrett, who went off. Quarterback sacks 13.5 for Miles Garrett, 8 for Fletcher Cox, 5 for Derek Barnett. Chris Jones only had three. Interceptions, three for Ronald Darby, two for Malcolm Jenkins, two for Buda Baker. Sidney Jones had one. Force fumbles, one player had three. That would be Ronald Darby. He also had two recoveries, which led the team. And then defensive touchdowns. I don't really think we'll see any, and we don't. What's going on, Crow? This is an Eagles rebuild. Tom Brady wins MVP. Where's Carson Wentz? Finishing at number seven. NFC Offense Player of the Year is Mitchell Trubisky. Interesting. Carson Wentz at four. How do you have a better season? Defense player of the year. I don't know how the Rams get it all the time. Like, Mark Barron is a 75 overall. Surprise Corey Littleton's not in here. Aaron Donald finishes at eight. No Miles Garrett. Ronald Darby was at number three. How did I miss that? Offensive rookie of the year goes to Josh Rosen as the Cardinals finished eight and eight. Param Crow will be happy to see that. Dallas Goddard at number 10. And then defensive rookie of the year goes to Fred Warner. Avante Maddox at number five. All right. So, I'm not going to jump in the first season. I think that's going to be pretty obvious. It's just like kind of anticlimactic. If we get to the Super Bowl, maybe we'll jump into Super Sim, see what happens. But we are in the wild card against the Dallas Cowboys. Probably would be in my best interest to upgrade these players. So, I think I'm going to do that. Miles Garrett has four skill points. Yeah, he was a pretty pretty big player to trade for. And this will be the team for the playoffs, fully upgraded. Offensive line looking really solid. Zach Ertz up to a 95 overall. Nelson Aguilar is getting a bit better. Alvin Kamara up to a 94 with confidence. Carson Wentz at a 92. Defensively, we continue to improve. Malcolm Jenkins up to a 93. Buda Baker up to an 84. Ronald Darby's up to an 87 is big. Sidney Jones, 80. Derek Barnett up to an 83. Chris Jones up to a 91. And then with confidence now, Miles Garrett is a 99 overall. Josh Sweat's a good backup to have. All right, let's go ahead and advance to the divisional. Do we beat the Dallas Cowboys? I hate saying we for the Eagles. <laughs> and we do not. We lose 31-21. And that's our season. Taken by a division rival in the wild card after we won 11 games. Uh, is that Richard Rodgers? I didn't even know he was on this team. Is it? It told why? Why is he here? Uh, I'm out. I'm out. Um, all right. Free agency time. Let's see who's gonna be here. Probably the same that we always see, and I have no interest. Kareem Hunt's here. Jason Verrett is here. I think with our trio now, we don't really need a cornerback, as they've developed really well. So I'm kind of out. Jay Ajayi is here. Do we re-sign him to be a backup? I I don't want to offer him that money. Who's a running back nobody's going after? TJ Yeldon? I'd be cool to offer TJ Yeldon a contract. Six years, about 30 mil. Yeah, alright. Could bring Shady back, but I'm... Uh, I don't want to do that. He's an 80 overall. Uh, only going to get worse. TJ Yeldon accepts. 
He's now the backup running back. We have Corey Clement as well, but uh, I don't really care. And of course, I did have the CPU doing the auto scouting. So we are just going to hop in here. We should have, what, two first round picks? We have our first round pick. It's going to be like 26 or so, 24. And we also have the number one overall pick. Okay. Who do we get that from? The Raiders? I think so. So what do we need? Don't need a quarterback. Don't need a running back. Don't need a defensive tackle. Don't really need a cornerback, I said. So we're looking at linebacker, left guard. Ashton Orchard out of Bama. Great combine. Great top three skills. He's a mid-first rounder, but he's very, very good. He's the player that I want. Hold on here. Also need a safety. Shamir Kalmalot. Doesn't really interest me. Rashawn Westmoreland. Looks actually really good. Early second round guy. All right, we might look into that. Uh, tell you what, I'm going to trade down. As I love to do. Uh, hopefully not too far. I will do it manually if I have to. Ooh, that's actually great. Okay, so the Redskins are offering me a first rounder next year. A one and a two this year. And those are good picks. So I am going to take that trade. Uh, and I do want to see where this middle linebacker falls in the entire draft because I might also have to trade back up. He's at number 15. So I'm going to trade back up to like number six and hopefully he doesn't go. Reds can take a defensive tackle. Why? Why would they ever take a defensive tackle? Garth Wood, the Giants. Good left tackle goes. I want that middle linebacker. All right, I think the Lions worry me. They're someone that could take a middle linebacker. So I'm going to try and trade up for this pick. I really just wanted the picks next year. So, killing it there. Um, 13 overall. They, yeah, they need a middle linebacker. I'm not going to risk this. Do you want, and I know this is going to be tempting, what do you think about Avante Maddox? They're interested? Why? Hold on. Oh my god. Why would you ever want Avante Maddox? I guess they see potential that I don't. All right. Avante Maddox, a fifth this year and a third next year. Tell me you're interested. Boom. All right. That's going to get it done. We now own the seventh pick in the draft. I will be taking that middle linebacker, Ashton Apple Orchard. <laughs> what a terrible nickname. All right. The Bama Beast. Only 21 years old. Amazing top three skills and combine. Welcome to the Philadelphia Eagles, ranked at number four in the class. We took him at number seven. Quick development, 84 speed, 90 tackle, 87 block shed, 77 hit power. I wish it was a bit higher. Good pursuit. Coverage is not terrible. Good strength. Yeah, really, really solid pick. We're going to be moving him to right outside linebacker. And now we pick at number 13 as Shamir Kamalot goes out of Louisville. Uh, I, don't, I didn't want him, so I'm fine with that. And the next player I want is Rashawn Westmoreland. Uh, who else can we go with here? Karis Coffee. You know what? I'm down. I'm ranked at number 16. We take my number 13. Quick development. 21 years of age. 78 overall. He'll get you going in the morning. 83 speed. 84 tackle. 85 or 84 block shed. 84 tackle. He has super low hit power at 65, which kind of jumps out to me. But he has great zone coverage at 83. 74 man coverage. 83 strength. Another really, really solid player. He'll also be moved to outside linebacker. As now our linebacking core is complete. As Henry Fasano goes to the Patriots. Quarterback out of Nebraska. Show me that free safety. Rashawn Westmoreland out of Northern Iowa. Great top three skills. He's a run support guy with great speed. And he is now the newest Philadelphia Eagles. 76 overall. 87 speed. Zone coverage is low at 72. 83 tackle. 82 pursuit. 82 hit power. 87 acceleration. Decent man coverage. Really not a guy that's going to get after the quarterback. 24 power moves. 47 finesse moves. Uh, eh. Eh. He's all right. Nothing special. As Victor Shelby just went at 80 overall free safety. I didn't even see him on the board. I guess he was better than he looked. Because nothing popped out at me. And there's that left guard, Ray Moreno, out of LSU. Wish the bench press was higher. Because I do care about that for offensive line. 
We're going to take him, though. Ray Moreno out of LSU. 78 overall, quick development, ranked number 13 in the class. 85 strength, 84 run block, 77 pass block. 74 speed, too. Not bad. Not bad. He will be an instant upgrade at the left guard position. What else? I don't know what I even take here. I think this is a trade down pick for something next year. Ooh, wait, never mind. Francis Leak, 4 6 flat speed is not great, but he does have good ability, which interests me. But now Cooper as well. If he's available in the fourth round, I guess I would take him. Let's go with this receiver here. Francis Leak out of Clemson. 74. Ugh. 85 speed. He's got great catching. 82 catching, 83 catching traffic, 86 spectacular catch, 75 release. Good route running in general. Deep is not that great. 85 speed is tough. That's tough to deal with. He's probably never going to be more than a rotational player for us. But I think our current third best wide receiver is a 74 overall or so. So, it was worth it. Um, Joey Vasquez at a Marshall to the Pats. Is that wide receiver still going to be there? Probably not. He is not. Not a player I was going to trade up for, though. How are you telling me this is a second round talent? He's well-rounded. We'll take him. 74 overall. Ranked at number 62. Yeah, I, I guess barely. Barely. He's a... Uh, he's a second-round talent. But, uh, yeah. Pretty good draft overall. We had some high picks. We navigated back into the first round. Used Devontae Maddox. To do better is Attico with a tier one sub nine months in a row. Does our nine month anniversary? Let me draft, name a drafted player. Uh, we'll change. It's going to be Attico Orchard. That's your name now. All right, Attico Orchard. There you go. We also have to move him to outside linebacker. Decent draft for us. Um, Orchard is going to play on the right side. Only 21. Like, he's he pretty good for a, like, probably true junior. Or redshirt sophomore. Either, either one could have been applicable. So, he is an 84 overall right outside linebacker. Coffee's probably going to be in that 81, 82 range at left outside linebacker, I guess. So, Karis Coffey uh, is now a left outside linebacker, which means that he is an 81 overall. So, we have 97 offense, 95 defense, and now it's just kind of about progression. I don't know how I feel about Westmoreland. I know Malcolm Jenkins is getting worse. I don't feel like trading him. Buda Baker could eventually be that strong safety if we need him to be. I mean, we'll just have to see what Westmoreland brings to the table. The general, we can call him. You guys are history buffs for the United States of America. You may know General Westmoreland. We will spend that coach XP, though. Where do I want to use it? Either linebackers or defensive backs. We got some rookies at the position. We'll go linebacker. And we will also simulate to the midseason mark. So... We're killing it. This one's going real easy. Three and four. Fantastic. Cowboys are six and one. What do you mean? I don't understand how we can get like better and then perform so much worse. Breaks my heart. It really does. I mean, I love this in real life, obviously. But, uh, no, this is not the point. I need to, uh... I need to win games now. Don't do that to me. Kidding? Chris Jones will be a free agent at the end of the year. Um, and so will Carson Wentz, Larmy Tunsil, Nelson Aguilar, Jake Elliott. 
We have a lot of high profile guys to bring back. We have a lot of cap room. I'm going to offer max deals. You're going to get a seven year deal. Carson Wentz is probably going to get a seven year deal as well. 89 overall. Yeah, he's going to get a seven year deal. Let's give him 182 flat. He comes back. Laramie Tunsil. Another guy I want to offer a big deal to because he's young. I'm going to go seven years. 70 million. He'll make uh, eventually like 10 million per year. Nelson Aguilar. Would I be comfortable with him until he's in his 30s? I think probably. Let's, let's not go seven though. <laughs> let's go five. And then Jake Elliott is the last guy I'm going to resign for now. We're going to give him a seven-year deal because he is a solid kicker. and Those are hard to come by. Let's simulate to the playoffs. See if this team has what it takes. I mean, Cowboys made the wild card last year. So we could do the exact same thing this year with them winning the division, I'd imagine. And we do not... Seven and nine, worst record in the entire NFC East. I don't understand. Carson Wentz had a decent season. Touchdowns are down. Rushing, Alvin Kamara was great. Receiving, Zach Ertz still led our team in, in catches, tied with Nelson Aguilar. No real big touchdown numbers, but Alshon Jeffrey had eight. Francis Leak played a lot. He almost had 1,000 yards, five touchdowns. Pretty good season for him as a rookie. Only a 74 overall. Offensive line was good. Defensively, Jordan Hicks once again led our team in tackles, this time with 115. Chris Jones in tackles for loss. Quarterback sacks are not as high as they were last year. 7.5 for Derek Barnett, 7 for Miles Garrett, 6.5 for Fletcher Cox, and then 6 for Chris Jones and Karis Coffey. Interceptions, 3 for Ronald Darby. Not really forcing a lot of turnovers. I'd love to see our actual ranks to the rest of the league as I see one defensive touchdown. We got two. Malcolm Jenkins and Ronald Darby. We have the sixth offense, but what, like the 30th defense? How do we only win seven games with this performance? 16? That doesn't even make sense. That's just unlucky, because clearly we're an above-average team. As Drew Brees, now an 88 overall, wins MVP with the 14-2 Saints. Uh, no Eagles, as far as I can tell. Sometimes I'm blind. Drew Brees won Offensive Player of the Year. Kamara at seven. Defensive Player of the Year, Jalen Smith. No Eagles. Offensive Rookie of the Year is Garth Wood. Francis Leak at number two. No other Eagles. Defensive Rookie of the Year is Karis Coffey. Rashawn Westmoreland at two. Attica Orchard at three. Of course, his name before it being changed was... Uh, Apple? No, I... Not... Art? No. Ashton, yeah. All right, so if you missed that one, that's what happened there. We have some upgrades. Karis Coffee has five points. It's going to go all into Run Stopper because this guy. I mean, Block Shedding's an 88. That's not bad. I don't know. I'm going to let the CPU decide where they want to do it. It's probably all going to be Scheme Fit. Um, you, know, you like the Greedy Williams pick, Crow? I, I, I don't know. Like, when I was doing that, it was between him and Jonah Williams. And I just figured that they would look to go cornerback because the 49ers, like, when they missed on Marshawn Lattimore at number two, they decided to trade back. They missed out on, like, a clear stud. And I think the Cardinals, with that fresh in their memory, same division, maybe they know about it, probably. Uh, maybe they'd value cornerback if they view him as a top-five player and find O-line other ways as the Rams blow out the Chargers 37-3 in the Battle of L.A., Super Bowl 54. That's an interesting one. I thought you were recording. Oh, yeah, I am uh, recording and streaming. I forgot I was in the call. Yeah. Okay. You're not streaming. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> so that, that was Healy. I forgot I was in the Discord call. Um, in the not streaming one, no less. So could have been bad. Miles Jack is here. Eric Ebron, DJ Swearinger. Uh, we don't need anybody, clearly. I don't even know what we do. I mean, the team's pretty good. You're in there for like five minutes. What are you... Oh, man, that could have been dangerous. Um, 
Hmm. I mean, I like where the team is, so. They want to mess up the flow. Ooh, thanks. Yeah, that was a big talky period. 97 offense, 95 defense. Let's see where players uh, went. Let's see who picked up who. Miles Jack to the Dolphins. Ebron to the Bills. Swearinger to the Bucks. Derrick Henry to the Bills. Anya Mata to the Rams. ASJ to the Cowboys. Anthony Brown goes to Tampa Bay, as does Alex Okafor. Hook em horns. Von Bell to the Packers. Interesting. Vic Beasley to Miami. Tyler Higby to the Jets. Damn, the Bucks really went all out. They signed a lot of players. NFL draft time. We might have a really high pick. 13 from the Redskins. That actually might be from us. The Redskins did better. There goes an 80 overall left guard to the Panthers. And who would I even take at this point? I feel like every position is uh, fine for us. So it would kind of just be best player available. We do need wide receivers. Or at least one. They are... Wow, terrible. Oh my god, what a class. They're, they get a lot better later. Like, Gordon Hendricks is someone that I want. Good speed and good top or three skills. Marion Wright looks really solid as well. We'll take receivers later. We'll operate on, like, a best player available at an applicable position basis right now. What's going on, Kool-Aid? Hmm... 464 speed. Kind of out. Cedric Beasley. 471 speed at, at cornerback. We're going to take Crosby McCoy out of Wisconsin. Elite speed. Decent top three skills. He's an 81 overall with quick development. Ranked at number five in the class. 97 speed. 81 man. 86 press. Pretty good pick. Obviously, I feel like the CPU or like the game when grading cornerbacks really, really value speed and man coverage for corners. Press is high, so he's a good player. We pick again at number 22. That must be the Redskins pick as a tight end goes to the Jags to replace Austin Safari and Jenkins. I didn't even know what I would need at this point. We just go with backup QB. Could go with a guard, and if he's in the 80s, I mean, like, why not? We'll start him at left guard. Oh, he's not. He's not. Second round now. We will see how well we perform. There's DeAndre Hope. I hope the Panthers don't think he's going to be any good because he only has 71 overall. Round two, pick again in the fourth. Tyrone Ross out of Ohio looks pretty sick, honestly. Great bench, good top three skills for a second round player. Oh yeah, I forgot that we kind of need a safety. Like, not really, but kind of. I feel like going with that defensive end, though, for depth purposes. So I am going to go Tyrone Ross here. 75 overall, what's your block shed? 82 with 90 strength? Eh. He's all right. He's all right. I ain't nothing special. I'll tell you that much. Willis Maxwell. Let's see here. Any good wide receivers available? Harmon Gibson at a ball state. I don't like that speed. I want someone faster. Marion Wright we talked about. 439 speed. Malik Clements at a Duke. 471. I'm out. Alright, we got one of the players available that I wanted. Marion Wright at a main. 439 speed with good top skills. 75 overall, but star development. 93 speed. Good short and medium route running. Not really a great catcher of the football. Good ball carrier moves. He's a, he could be a fun player. Star development's good. I'm telling you, he will be the slot receiver. So, we'll have to see how he performs. Dylan Coleman. Franklin Jones goes to the Panthers. 
We are on the clock here in the fifth round. As do I take Harmon Gibson now? I think I might. At a ball state. Like he is bad speed. Really not a great combine guy. What is your deep threat speed? 447? Four, four, Pass. Malik Clements or they're both so slow. But at least Malik Clements can jump. Alright. 73 overall normal. Good pick for the for the spot, but not someone that's gonna start. We're gonna simulate to the end. And we'll see what we can do. I am excited to see what this rookie receiver can do. I really am. Leak is not going to play over him. I can guarantee you. Yeah, we're going to move that around. Okay, so. Let's advance to... Season number three. 93 offense. 93 defense. I'm not really sure how it got worse. I feel like we haven't, like, gotten worse. So, I don't know. Leak for Marion Wright. Marion Wright will also be slot receiver. Oh, he already is. All right, killer. He's going to have a sick rookie season, I can guarantee. Where have we... I mean, we still need a, a, a strong safety, or a free safety. Oh, yeah, we got McCoy. You know what? So, we, we're going to solve the safety issue right now. Buda Baker now plays free safety. Which is just perfect for us. Team should be a lot better now. Defensively. Like 95 overall maybe. Yeah, 95 overall. Team goes up to a 91. Buda Baker is an 89 overall free safety. Now we still have a good group of three cornerbacks. Defensive line is pretty sick. Offensively, I like where we are. We need a backup quarterback. Let's go sign one. Jew Bernard is here. Oh my god, the best backup quarterback. Screw Nick Foles, man. We got Fitz Magic. Welcome. I'm in on that. Mid season mark. Let's get it. Wait. Wait. I didn't use my coach XP. Nearly forgot. Yo, Brandon Z28 with the Twitch Prime sub. Welcome, man. Thank you so much for the subscription. Enjoy the benefits, I guess. Enjoy the emotes. Appreciate it. Thank you so much for the sub. And now, it is time to simulate to the midseason mark. I'm going to predict five wins. I think this is a five-win team. And we have four wins. We're four and four. The Giants are six and one. It's currently anybody's division to win here in the NFC East, as it is in real life, pretty much. Well, I mean, we got to make the playoffs this year, so. We still don't really have a star wide receiver. Like, nobody in the 90s. Hmm. Let's upgrade the D-line. Boom. All right. So, we uh, have Miles Garrett as an impending free agent. I don't know if I want to uh, re-sign guys right now, because if this might be the final season, there's not really a whole point. You know what I mean? It depends if we make the playoffs or not. I'll deal with them in the offseason, if that's the case. We're Let's go week by week. See how this team performs. Cooper Cup for wide receiver. Uh, eh. They move my stuff around. Did I do generate best? Hope not. All right. Week by week. So past the bye week now. Got the Cardinals. The Parham Crows. And we win. Now it's another bird versus bird matchup. The 5-4 Eagles versus the 8-1 Baltimore Ravens. The Giants just keep on winning. They improved to 7-2. 1-1 one one in their last two games. 
Let's upgrade the players a little bit as we barely beat the Cardinals 30 to 24. And uh, a win here would be big. We play the Giants next week. Show me six and four. Boom. That's what I'm talking about. Big win over the Ravens. We're closing in. A win here would be excellent because the Giants would drop to eight and three. Cowboys doing whatever. We'd improve to seven and four. It is already week 12. This is a, in my opinion, a must win game. All we can upgrade here is Alvin Kamara and Jake Elliott. Can we beat the Giants? We do. 7-4 and four now. The Cowboys won. They improved to 8-3. and three. We play them in Week 14. That's another big matchup as we play another bird team. How many bird teams are there in the NFL? Cardinals, Ravens, Eagles, Falcons, Seahawks. That's five. Am I missing anybody? Um, I don't think so. There's like a couple of horse teams, Broncos, Colts, Chargers. And yes, Charger is for a horse. Eight and four. One again, second place. We're, I mean, we're in prime position to make the wild card either way with a two point victory over the Seattle Seahawks. All right, we need to beat the Cowboys, though. It's a home game as well. Come on, now. Eight and five, we lose. And the Giants win. We lost 41 to three. And now the Browns are probably going to beat us. Back-to-back -back losses would sting badly. And we do. Eight and six. We need to win out. Giants are 10 and four. Would ten or three teams from the NFC East make the playoffs? I think unlikely. We need to win out. If we get to 10 wins, we're not going to miss the playoffs. I don't think. Let's go ahead and check the standings. In general. Because I guess technically the NFC East probably wouldn't have a, anyone that clinched. No. Cowboys, Giants. We are close. But not there yet. We need to win out. The 4-9-1 Steelers needs to be a win. If we lose, the season's over. We advance to 9-6, and, and the Bucs are 2-13. and 13. We need to beat the Bucs. We beat the Steelers by one point, 25-24. All right, trust in Deku. You getting better? All right, need a big win. A win gets us into the wild card, I guess. Boom, it does. Finishing 10 and 6. Three teams from the NFC East made the playoffs. Oh boy. We got to go up to Minnesota to play the Vikings. Killed the Bucks though, 42 24. Carson Wentz. I, I don't know. Like, it's a good season. I'm not going to take that away. Just I, nothing spectacular there other than touchdown interception ratio is pretty good. Alvin Kamara, once again, was great. No 1,000 yard receivers. Marion Wright. 12 touchdowns as a rookie in the slot out of Maine. Love it. Offensive line. Uh, eh, eh, not bad for the game, I guess. Jordan Hicks again, 115 tackles. Tackles for loss. Miles Garrett picked up 18, but 16 for Fletcher Cox and Derek Barnett with 12 for Chris Jones, 10 for Karis Coffey. Quarterback sacks. 9 for Garrett, 7 for Jones, 7 for Cox. Interceptions. 4 for Ronald Darby, 3 for Sidney Jones, and Buda Baker, Malcolm Jenkins with 2. Force fumbles. I, I don't even know if I'll check this anymore. It doesn't really matter. And then touchdowns. One for Buda Baker. 27th best offense. Not good. Matt Nagy or Nagy is with the uh, Vikings now. How did that happen? <laughs> How did that happen? Todd Gurley wins MVP. No Eagles. NFC Office Player of the Year is Todd Gurley. No Eagles. Defense player of the year, Eric Kendricks. Jordan Hicks at eight. The offensive rookie of the year is Leonard Fletcher. Marion Wright at two. Defensive rookie of the year, Mario Fields. Crosby McCoy, cornerback at number two. Just missed on both offense and defense for rookie of the year. Very tough. But uh, let's go ahead and upgrade. 
some of these players. Buda Baker with three points. He's going, uh, going up to a 93 overall. Maybe even a 94. Who knows? Depending on how they do it. He is 93. 97 offense, 99 defense for a 94 overall. All right, Vikings. Play the moment situation now. They are an 80 overall. Bruh. Bruh. How are they? Like, I don't understand how we don't dominate when I build these super teams. Feels like we should dominate, yet we do not. We struggle to win games, barely making the playoffs. Makes me very sad. But, uh, yeah, we'll see what we can do. I'm obviously not a great player. I'm only going to jump in if I have to. Only jump in if I have to. So, we'll see. Thank you guys for watching, by the way. Appreciate you guys being here. It's been a pleasure. And, um, yeah, let's get after it. Speed, fast. Skip, skip. Just don't let him score. Please, CPU, just be good. 7-0 already. Just got to play defense. Get back in the end zone. I don't want all these moments. 10-3. Good spot. And our defense is playing pretty well. So is the offense. 17-3 now about going into halftime. We are now in the second half. We should at least get three on the board here. And it looks like it's probably going to be a touchdown. No, only get three. 20-3. Vikings finally answer. Is field goal and then a touchdown and then another touchdown. What is happening? It's 20 to 15 all of a sudden. I, we're turning over the ball like crazy. Only one turnover. Let's force a turnover ourselves. We can't let Minnesota get back in this game, but they already are. Shut down Dalvin Cook. Oh boy. Just hit circle to skip moments. What do you think I'm doing? What do you think I've been doing? <laughs> All right, come on now. Second and six. Dalvin Cook is really fast. All Madden's a joke. I hate it. Look at that. Third and inches. They're running the ball hard. Time is really ticking off the clock as well. I don't want to run commit, but like, eh, kind of want to run commit. And just shut down Dalvin Cook. And I changed from man coverage, but I ripped the ball out with RB. Big play, going to be fourth and inches. Minnesota's going to have no choice but to go for it. Gotta love that. Alright, come on now. Big moment from the defense. I'm gonna use your Buda Baker. Get up close to the line. It's a pitch to the outside. What? That's I'm, I mean I'm right there. Dalvin Cook scores a touchdown. And he, it is now 21-20 in favor of the Vikings. We're gonna have to drive down the field. On default, all Madden, which I hate. We'll try to score a touchdown to keep our season alive. And they're going for the football as well. That's Marion Wright over the middle, the rookie out of Maine. And we'll see what he can do. I don't really... If something's open deep, we'll go to it, but I'm not going to try and force it. We're going to check down to Kamara. There's a spin move that isn't good. And I don't know. Can we run the ball here? I don't think blocking is going to be great. But, I mean, we'll try. Yeah, I mean, no. It's just, that's we have a good offensive line. That's some of the worst blocking I've ever seen. Hmm. Send Kamara on a wheel, maybe. Rolling out. On the run. It's Marion Wright! Unbelievable! That was a dangerous throw. I love getting out of the pocket and uh, making those throws, but if that was off target, that's bad. He has eight catches for 172. What a beast. 
All we need is a field goal to win. We probably shouldn't be passing the ball still. You hate to see it. Why did I do that? Oh my god. <laughs> hate to see it. Hate to see it. Hate to see it. We still have a chance. Mm. Is that fair catch interference? That's a yikes. Oh, illegal block in the back. That, that actually really sucks. Because that's going to pin us at the 7. Alright, well. Now we have to go downfield. Man, that's rough. If I wasn't so damn stupid, we would have won this game, probably. We got Zach Ertz, though. He breaks a tackle. Still going. We got to call a timeout. That illegal block in the back actually really, really hurts. That's crazy. Okay. Uh, we're not... Jeez. Oh, I don't even know what to do here. I'm going to do that. Yeah, I mean, oh, it's over. It's over. Eagle block on the back, in the, in the back on a fair catch. I didn't even think about that. Yeah. The hell? How did that even happen? All right, we need a. Uh, we need it beat press here. Uh, it's an interception. I, we didn't really have a lot of options. That's a dumbass penalty, but that's also a, a dumbass person. We didn't need to pass. All I need to do is run and take the field goal, and I step up into a spy, and I fumble. Ugh. Oh, hate it. Stupid. Stupid me. That is, uh, that is a bad way to end it. But uh, it is the Eagles. I high key do not give a shit. Am I sounding hip like the kids when I say high key? Yeah, I, I just don't. It, it is what it is. And I guess that's going to do it for the video. The team's sick. It really is. But as you guys can tell, when we get uh, smashed by an 80 overall team, it, it is, you know, we, we build a 94 and we lose to an 80. Part of that's my fault, but also the CPU allowed a huge comeback. Choke! That's going to do it for me, guys. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed, and I'll see you in the next one. Take it easy.